So I'm actually an accountant by trade. I'm a chartered accountant. I work for Deloitte. You are literally defying every single stereotype of an accountant that is out there. Sarah Crowley, welcome. Good morning or good afternoon for you. It's pretty cool that we can actually stay connected during this time. I'm looking forward to having a chat. I mean, normally we would only talk at races, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's like at the finish line, it's always a little bit hectic. Like when you have a good race, at least I get you in a press conference, but then that's about it. Oh, we see each other a lot then. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was saying it before when, when I talked to the boys, it's actually very true. It's, you're, you're one of the few Australians who doesn't shy away from racing in Europe. How come? Yeah, look, um, I think, I mean, we really focus on the big races usually. I don't really spend a lot of time. We, we spend that other time kind of training really hard. So we like to race the top level so that by the time we get to Kona or the other world championship level events, you're sort of ready to race um, at that level. I think sometimes it can be overwhelming by the time you get to Kona if you haven't sort of already raced some of the top level athletes by then. And, I think it gives you the opportunity as well to work on your weaknesses and stuff. So I think it's going to be unique this year because I'm not going to have the opportunity so much to do that by the time we start racing. It's going to be interesting to see what that looks like for me. It's really, really weird. It's, uh, yeah, we've been, like, I think everybody is talking about it. Like, wherever you look, pros, age groupers, nobody knows what, what's happening. Like, what's your take on, on the whole thing? Like, in terms of training, have you slowed down? You're just maintaining? What are you doing? Yeah, it's really interesting. I think we talked late last year, well, actually at the Hawaiian Ironman with my coach about how this year might need to be a little bit more flexible because of the, the PTO and uh, different opportunities and different races being more and more or less important this year. So we went with a view late last year to race Arizona and for me to qualify for Hawaii early, so I had flexibility going into this year. So it's been really interesting for me because we took an extended break over December uh, and then January we sort of started a little bit of training, but I sort of started hitting my training at the Threadbow camp that I'd just come back from. And then all of a sudden this happened. And I think for me, at least I have that flexibility that I'm already qualified. So I'm not as stressed out. So for me, it feels like we're just sitting in a holding pattern of that level of training that we got to at my last camp. I know for some athletes that are in our squad, they may be, we're training really heavily into some of the uh, qualifying races that are, would have happened in the next few weeks. So I feel for them because they've done so much work already. Um, and then to have, I guess, I didn't have any goal in my mind other than some amazing travel all over the world that I was going to do <laughs> to train. But yeah, like I didn't have a big race goal in my mind. So I think uh, for me, yeah, it's, it's a little easier um, psychologically. I can just sort of sit in my holding pattern and enjoy um, you know, probably getting some of my admin done and getting things sort of up to scratch as things that have been neglected over the last few years. And I've been training really heavily for four years. So for me, it's kind of an opportunity to get some more, uh, I guess, uh, just sit back for a bit, reflect on what we've done and refocus. So a lot of stuff that, that's cancelled already, a lot of that's out in the open. Quite bummed out not to see um, the Collins Cup, for example. Would have really loved to see that as a new foreman. Like the, the different nations battle it out with the continents. Were you looking forward to that one? Yeah, definitely. So the, the first half of the year was sort of centred around that. So that and then uh, to stay in Europe after that. Um, yeah, so it is a little bit disappointing. Um, I haven't even had the opportunity really to speak to, because we're sort of isolated now. We haven't had the chance to actually speak to other people about how they feel about it. But um, for me, it was a focus because we didn't have any stress on any of the qualifying races. So we'd sort of set that one, mark that one down as a, you know, big event for me for this year. So, yeah, I'm really disappointed because I would have loved to have seen what it would turn out like. And it, you know, it's, uh, I guess it's still out there though. We can do the inaugural event at some point. It's, it's going to happen. So Very true. It's going to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's very simple. Just stay up, high up in the rankings and as simple mm. as that. Did you look at the potential start list and think about, ooh, I would really like to race this person or, ooh, I don't want to race this one? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always a bit, um, I guess I'm calculated. So for me, I was, was really fascinated by it. It was never clear to me whether it was exactly going to be like a full long course or a half distance. But for me, if it was middle, middle long, you know, like the three 120 kind of thing, that's right my, up my jam. And I, I really was looking forward to that distance because I've won a world title at that. Yeah that distance before so um 
it kind of levels out the difference between some of the, there are people that are pretty good at the real long stuff. And then there's also some people ranked highly that are good at the shorter stuff. But for me, uh, that middle just sort of hits, hits right on the spot for my uh, ability to kind of like hold the pace. So I was really looking forward to, to that being a distance. Okay. But are you generally like, I mean, in the framework, are you, are you cool with the situation? Like you're, you're fine or are you worried in any way? Should we right, mate? No, I'm Australian. Like we, <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I've always been a bit, um, I overcome, I found that's one of my strengths is to overcome stuff. Like I've had accidents and things in races or whatever. So I think it's just how motivated you are as to how well you can adapt and, and to find a way to make things uh, work. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I guess the athletes that probably plan for what's going to happen um, and the ones that aren't motivated as much by the race results and more by just the self-achievement and that will probably find a way to make make it happen and, and, and stay fit and healthy and come out the other side, maybe even finding some other areas that they've worked on that maybe benefit them in the long run. So, yeah, there's always a way to look at it that you can get something good out of it. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's still very challenging. Um, there's been one thing I've been wondering about pretty much ever since I dove into the world of triathlon is why are there so many amazing Australian athletes? Like, where does it come from? I don't know. We've got a pretty strong sporting culture. It's probably less so than it was maybe 10, 15 years ago. But I guess everyone looks up to the sporting heroes and most kids play every single sport because if we want to have a soccer team and a football team and a cricket team, you kind of need to play in all of them because we just don't have, we've got such a small population. We've got a lot of wide open spaces and facilities and the weather's pretty good all year round. So I guess people come out well-rounded and then by maybe by the time they hit 20, they sort of focus on a sport and, yeah, I think we've had great sporting success because of that. I guess it's across a lot of sports. On that, there hasn't been a lot of leniency, though, for athletes training whilst this is happening. So I think, you know, everyone, the government's taking it very seriously, like most countries, I think. There's not, yeah, any special, uh, you know, pools open for our Olympic swim team or anything, which is, I think, uh, yeah, it's made it really, I mean, imagine being one of them at the moment. That's tough. That's the thing, eh? At least you got two things to still work on, and then plus strength and all that kind of stuff. As a swimmer, I, I would not want to be a swimmer right now. Do you have like a, a hero? Like who's the, who's the best of all time? My background's in running. Like I started running at school when I was sort of twelve. I've done long, a lot of long, long kilometers since high school. And so I guess I look to like Rob D. Costello. He's an Australian marathon runner from like the 80s. You know, we've had some amazing sporting heroes across the other sports as well with swimming and things with uh, Ian Thorpe and Kieran Perkins and, and these guys. So I, I guess I look to our kind of like 80s and 90s heroes um, because that's my era um, for my inspiration. Um, but you know what, as well, there's like a lot of young people coming up through sport that you look to as well. So yeah, I think... Um, yeah, um, we're lucky. We're blessed in Australia. We've got lots of athletes to, to aspire to be. Where, where are you going to be for like, the, the training phase now? From like a training perspective, my coach over the last few weeks has kind of maybe focused more on like immunity and not kind of going too deep into the well for anyone. The training definitely adapted. And then after that, I guess we just have to reschedule everything. So it will just really depend on, on what happens with the rest of the racing, you know. it's uh, Yeah, it's quite uncertain, but it's fine because... I'll just, I'm adaptable. I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, I've got a good team behind me. So everyone's just, we're just doing whatever we can to, yeah, make do at the moment. Hey, I'm, I'm very hopeful for you because Australia must be doing something right if the headline I read today was right. Australia was pretty much the last country in the world to catch on that there is an actual coronavirus out there. And then today already, I'm reading the headline that infection numbers in Australia are decreasing. How? Uh, I don't know. I think, well, I think maybe we've got wide open spaces. There's less people here. Um, yeah. You know, I think the government's given, ama I don't know about you guys, but we've had amazing financial incentives. So maybe it's a little bit of, well, if you do what you're told, we'll give you all this and, you know, you'll get through it. And there's a pretty good sense of, uh, I guess everyone's, um, oh, yeah, I hate the word nationalism, but people are kind of like, hooking in together and, and, and sticking together with it and looking after each other. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like that globally anyway. But, 
Yeah, I mean, back in Threadbow, I mean, just a few weeks back, uh, Dan Huskinson for a race, and we didn't, it wasn't even a thing. So um, we weren't really paying much attention. <laughs> then all of a sudden, everyone's locked down pretty hard. Um, also, I guess we've learned from everyone else, so we probably can make the more efficient changes. So since nobody can ever prove you wrong, which team would have won the Collins Cup? Oh, I mean, of course, the internationals. <laughs> <laughs> we had some changes in the rankings coming up like in the I mean trees went really well over in New Zealand and so we had a few different athletes come in and I think maybe that mix would have suited us a little better it's always hard to tell I mean as well it's pretty early in the year for the Euros coming off winter so we're all coming sort of off summer so maybe we would have had a good good shot at it yeah you know we'll get to we'll get to try that again hopefully everyone stays fit and healthy so that we can race head-to-head -head at, at a good level when it does happen.